Torah TV. The world is thinking. Let me start by saying, you want me to take this? Yeah, yeah I'd let love me you start to take by it. saying that I have done research on drunk driving. Uh, drunk driving is extremely dangerous relative to driving sober. That my uh, analysis suggests that uh, uh, drunk drivers are 13 times more likely to cause fatal crashes than sober drivers, which is very much in line with, with what other people have found. Uh, we've been told for 25 years, 30 years longer, about the dangers of, of drunk driving. There have been tremendous strides made in, in that uh, dimension. Still, of course, a lot of people drive drunk. There are, there are a million arrests a year for drunk driving, and uh, it's estimated that about one out of every 140 miles driven is driven by a drunk driver. It's really an amazing statistic. Uh, but what no one has ever really bothered, to, I've never heard anyone talk, mention, think about drunk walking, okay? <laughs> but when you look at the data, you get a different perspective. There are a thousand pedestrians each year killed walking drunk, okay? Out and there of 13,000. Yeah, there are only 13,000 uh, uh, drunk driver, you know, people who are killed in drunk driving crashes, okay? And a thousand people are, are, dr are drunk walking. The, the key thing is you gotta get the denominator. You gotta figure out, well, how many miles are driven drunk and how many miles are walked drunk? Okay? And we've laid out some assumptions. <laughs> Turns out there just aren't a lot of miles walked drunk in this country. It's uh, a lot of work to walk drunk. People don't do it so much. If you start to then make some reasonable estimates, we come up with the number that per mile walked, drunk walking is eight times as dangerous uh, is drunk driving, okay, for the individual. Now, of course, you, it's hard to kill other people when you're walking drunk, so you have to factor <laughs> that in. When you do that, it turns out in total deaths, there are five times as many deaths per mile walked drunk as there are driven drunk. Um, so, look, this is, and I want to make completely clear that we're not advocating drunk driving. Uh, we're not advocating drunk walking, but it's, uh, but I think the... Drunk the sleeping is probably yeah. the safest. Drunk thing. taxi dialing. <laughs> yeah, but I do, but I think what, what, what we, we start the book with that example, and I think what I love about that example is it's not something that anybody, anybody could have done it. it. It took about five minutes on the internet, you know, trying to figure out what some of the statistics were, and yet... And once you think about it, it kind of makes sense. And you can even maybe remember back to some of your own more drunken walking episodes and think that maybe I was, I, you know, I could have been killed. Uh, and yet no one has ever talked about or thought about it. And I think that's, that's kind of the power of ideas. I mean, not big ideas, not like string theory or theory of relativity, but little ideas and ways of thinking about the world differently that we're so much trying to cultivate well, with our approach to economics. So friends don't let friends walk drunk. That's the key. <laughs> You know, the ways that people die walking drunk, it's like, it's once you actually look at the numbers and see what's happening, it's so easy to get, you know, if you're in a city, you just step off the curb into, a into the path of a taxi. If you live, if you're somewhere in suburbs, people like make the mad dash across the highway just with bad judgment, thinking they can make it. In, in rural areas, there are places where people literally, you know, they, they drink a lot at a friend's house or at a bar, kind of walk home, then like literally lie down on the road to take a little nap. 